Hello, this is Donald Mallory with Donald's Breakfast Cereal Show. Thanks again for tuning in. Today we have Tim Tyler's Luck from 1937. This stars Frankie Thomas, who was also Tom Corbett, Space Cadet, and Whitey Benedict, who was one of the Bowery Boys. Now, the comic strip ran from 1928 to 1996. It's a pretty good run. So here we go with Chapter 1, Jungle Pirates. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back. Oh, this fool boy has been bothering me for weeks to take him up river in the jungle. Thinks his father's lost somewhere up there. What's your father's name, son? Tyler. Professor Tyler. What's he doing in the jungle? He's studying apes. He's the world's greatest authority on them. I'm afraid something's happened to him. I haven't heard from him for over a year. along the river. That must be Kelly, Troll 6, Captain. We can't let her get away. Get going, quick! We've got to stop it! Hey, Spider! Spider, look! The ivory patrol! all you want while I fix up that leg of yours. Tim! Not so loud. You'll scare him. Tim, are you crazy? Gosh, no, Miss Laura. This is the Panther Gary Drake shot. If it hadn't been for him, why, Drake would have shot us. He saved our lives. Thank you. 
Maybe his arm opening. Look out, he got your gaze. Stand clear. Told you those black panthers are murdered. Shoot the black devil. You try that and I'll shoot you. That black cat's worth $5,000 in Zanzibar. <laughs> Oh, uh, so it's you again. Trying to stow away in my boat, eh? Didn't I tell you the last trip? But I got to get to my lazy captain. He wouldn't take me as a passenger. I so got I... a good mind to turn you over to the police. Get out of here before I do it. What seems to be the trouble, Captain? Oh, this fool boy has been bothering me for weeks to take him up river in the jungle. Thinks his father's lost somewhere up there. What's your father's name, son? Tyler. Professor Tyler. What's he doing in the jungle? He's studying apes. He's the world's greatest authority on them. I'm afraid something's happened to him. I haven't heard from him for over a year. Too bad. Sorry I can't help you. Hey, get away from that panther! You want to get killed? Hurry up now. Get that stuff on board. Mr. Fender, get those men moving. Aye, aye, sir. Captain Kilbitch? Well, how do you do, ma'am? And I expect you'll be Miss Lacey. Yes. Your cabin's waiting for you, ma'am. Captain, I'd like to pay this boy's passage. I'm sorry, miss, but I refuse to accept the responsibility of dumping the boy in the jungle. And that's flat. Now, come with me and I'll show you your cabin. I'm sorry. I do hope to get word that your father's safe. Thank you. Here you are, miss. Not fit for a real lady, but it's the best we can do. I'm sure it's very nice, Captain. Oh, right, Miss Casey. I see we have another big game hunter aboard. Oh, you mean Gary Drake, explorer? Yes, he's made several trips to us. Uh, how soon do we get on the way? Just as soon as the car goes aboard, ma'am. Then I have time to write a letter. If it's a short one. The mail runner's due to leave any minute now. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Captain. <laughs> Oh, no trouble at all, I assure you. Thank you. If you'll just show me where I can find the mail run. Why, certainly. It's that big native over there with the mail bag. Oh, thank you so much. 
Not at all. Glad I caught the little clown before he threw it overboard. Oh, but you have been nice, Mr. Drake. Gary Drake. At your service, Lee. I'm Laura Lacey. Not the American girl who's come to Africa to hunt lions. Ooh, we're getting underway. Yes. Our next stop's at the jungle. about it. Just a little business with the Ivory Patrol. The Ivory Patrol? What's that? Something like the Canadian Mounted Police. Its principal business is to stop ivory smuggling and, of course, keep the natives in hand. Nine o'clock. I hope you won't think it rude of me, Miss Lacey. But if you'll excuse me, I'll go to my cabin, and I suggest you do the same. Tomorrow, Mr. Drake, I'm going to ask you a lot of questions about the lion country. Well, I'm no lion hunter, but I'll give you any information I can. Good night, Mr. Drake. Good night, Mr. the engine room, friend. Engine room's okay, Gary. The skipper and the steersman are both up in the wheelhouse and they've got guns. Smoke them out. Right, Gary. And no survivors, except the girl. No, nah, no, spider web will never stand for that. Let's go. Keep quiet, Mr. Lester. I'll get you off. Who is it? Who is it? Jim Tyler. Quick. Maybe we can lower our boat. Oh, what's happened? What's all the shooting? I don't know. Rebel pirates or something. But we gotta get off this boat or we'll be killed. Killed? We ought to have some guns. You've got some, haven't you, Miss Lacey? Yes, but they're down in the hole with the rest of my equipment. We'll have to go without them, then. Come on. Well, that does it. All except the girl. They'll be here before we can get the boat out. Oh, Tim, what do we do? Grab the next place that comes by. It's our only chance. I'll try. I suppose we might as well get it over with. Gary, you let her get away. Don't be a fool. You saw the rope I tied her in with. She must have gone over the side. If the crocs don't get her, the jungle cats will. Start the engine. Pulling out into the river again. Guess we made it, all right. I think we'd better get as far away from here as we can. All right. I'll help you down. What's that? Sounds like a 
sounds like a lion. What are we going to do? There's only one thing we can do. Spend the night up here in this tree. Take any room you want. In the morning, we'll find the trail on Basie. Oh, I hope you're right, Tim. Well, I've checked the man up to scary. 50 rifles, 10,000 rounds of ammunition, and five cases of grenades. A nice little haul. To say nothing of the fact that the Ivory Patrol won't have them to use against us. up here for? Something happened to the boat? Where's Captain Trowbridge? Get that native! Don't let him get away! What's the matter? Didn't you catch the trooper's horse? No. He sent us back for patrol headquarters by this time. I'm only hoping Spiderweb doesn't see him. Yeah, I wish Spider would come on with that transportation so he can get out of here. Longer dialect for white man's trouble, Captain. Trouble involving killing. Killing? Make him speak English, Gates. I don't understand this Kadonga dialect. Trump say, bad man him, kill him one white soldier along the river. That must be Kelly, patrol six, Captain. Who killed him? Natives? No, my people, Buana. Better leave at once, Sergeant. Take what men you need. Yes, sir. I'll take a squad. A call. Three and five. We're riding. I think I hear the jungle cruiser. Did you spy there all right? Remember, you guys, not a word about bumping off that trooper if you know what's good for you. Glad to see you, Spider. We're all ready for you. So I see. How about that trooper that was here a little while ago? Trooper? Come on, don't stall. There was a trooper. There's the tracks of his horse. How much did he find out? Well, he caught us with the goods, Spider. We didn't have a chance to cover up. So you killed him, eh? How many times have I told you that I wanted no trouble with the Ivory Patrol? How about the boat? Did you mess that job up, too? Well, to tell you the truth, Spider, one passenger did get away, a woman. But don't worry, the jungle cats have got her by now. A woman, eh? What was she doing on the Ambazi boat? Said she was going up country to hunt lions. I believe she was hunting you. Hunting me? For what? She was Donald Graham's sister. And she found out you'd framed him for that Kimberly Diamond robbery. 
Carlo Brain's sister. Are you sure? Absolutely. She told me her name was Laura Lacey, but I found these letters in her cabin. They're addressed to Laura Graham and signed your brother, Donald. Too bad the jungle cat's got her. I'd have enjoyed meeting Miss Graham. A jungle cruiser. Jungle cruiser? What do you mean? That's what my dad called it. He designed it specially for his trip into the jungle. Come on, Miss Laura. Gosh, I bet Dad will be surprised to see me. All set, Spider. Wait, Tim. Those are the pirates. How do you know? That's Gary Drake, the one who tied me in my cabin. The man he calls Spider must be Spider Webb. Spider Webb? Who's he? He's everything a man shouldn't be, Tim. A brutal killing crook. What's he doing with my dad's jungle cruiser? Do you think that... I hope not, Tim. The only way we can find out is to... Hear that? It sounded like a woman's scream. Maybe the jungle cats didn't get the Graham girl. I'll soon find out. Look! An armored tank! What's it doing in the jungle? Never mind that! We've got to stop it! Hey, Spider! Spider, look! The ivory patrol! Never mind those sins, soldiers! Keep after the girl! Soldiers, behind them! The Ivory Patrol! Ah! Oh, Tim, they're shooting them down! We can't help it. Hang on!
home. If this thing ever slips off that filing you put in, Spider. Quick, Sam! Get back! Get back! I bet you those two pairs have plenty of trouble well, explaining how we can cross the peak sand and they cannot. Huh? <laughs> What's a kid like you doing in the jungle, Tim? I'm searching for my father, Sergeant Gates. I'm sure worried about it. Because that's his jungle cruiser those men are using. What on earth would your father be doing with an armored tank? Well, you see, my dad's Professor Tyler. And he studies all about apes. He figured that the jungle cruiser would keep him safe from wild animals while he was doing his work. Feeling better, Miss Lacey? You know my name? Tim has been telling us how you got into this jam. He says you know who these men are. Is that right? I only know one of them. Gary Drake. He was a fellow passenger on the riverboat. But uh, from what I heard, their leader is a man called Spider Webb. Spider Webb? What's he doing in the jungle? I thought diamonds were his racket. He certainly is a tough customer to take a chance on stealing an ivory patrol car, though. That tank must have been too fast for the boys. Here they come now, Sergeant. You boys look like you've had tough going. I'll say we did. We ran into a bed of quicksand down by the Ugambi Swamp. The Ugambi Swamp? Spider Webb would pick a place out like that. Watch your step there. We've had too much trouble getting that stuff to risk losing any of it. Now don't worry. I ain't forgetting what happened to Beavens when he slipped off that path. I can hear him screaming yet. He's going to break my back, this rifle case. Help! Help! Help me if you can, but Help. hang on to those rifles or I'll shove you away. Hey, give me a hand, will you? Hang on to that ammunition. It's all you rat, you can't let me die like this. There's no use, Spider. He's going with b -Bank. Well, let's get going. Well, what are you standing there for? Get going. Deserted, all right, Sergeant. Did you hear that? Captain Trowbridge. 
Shot three times. No doubt Spider Webb and his bunch murders the entire crew. Fetch the boat just in case. Poor Juju. I know just how you feel. Someday we're going to square the account. Look, the sergeant's found Juju. Where'd you find him, sergeant? With Captain Trowbridge. Captain Trowbridge, he's alive? What's the matter, Tim? I was just thinking. Maybe the same thing happened to my dad. Oh, no, it didn't, Tim. We'll find him all right. Tim, you want to do something for me? Well, sure. I can. I know you would. My horse hasn't had a drink all day. Will you take him down to the creek and water him for me? Sure. Thanks, Tim. They're okay, Sergeant. The crew. I understand. You'll excuse us, Miss Lacey. We have some work to do. Of course. I'll get to my cabin and see if my things are still there. Thank you. Didn't find a pick and shovel around, did you? Boy, easy. I won't hurt you. I know you're hurt. Your leg's been shot. I just want to help you. You were trying to get to the water, weren't you? I'll get some for you. you want while I fix up that right. Steady now. I'll fix that leg up as good as new. My dad taught me how. Easy, boy. I'm not going to hurt you. Where's Tim? He hasn't come back yet. Well, he's been gone a long time. You suppose something's happened to him? Well, he can't be far off. Hey, Tim! Tim! Tim, where are you? Steady now. Don't get scared. Tim! Come on, Juju! Tim, where are you? Well, old fella, that ought to hold till the leg heals. You're scaring. Tim, are you crazy? Gosh, no, Miss Laura. This is the Panther Gary Drake shot. If it hadn't been for him, why, Drake would have shot us. He saved our lives. Didn't you, fella? Don't move, Tim. I'll get him. Stop, don't shoot. There's no danger. The Panther was hurt and Tim's been helping him. Helping him? Take care of yourself. Maybe I'll see you again sometime.
Good work, Tim. That took a lot of nerve. Thanks. I'm sending some of my men back to Magana with the boat, Miss Lacey. I think you'd better go along. Thanks, I'd rather not. I came into the jungle to hunt big game. If you don't mind, I'll go on to Anne Daisy with you. As you like. What about you, Tim? I can't turn back, Sergeant. I gotta find my father. Well, it looks like I can't get rid of either one of you. What's Anne Daisy like, Sergeant? Oh, it's just a frontier post. Uh, you'll see it before long. Say, sure looks like something doing, Sergeant. Who's that on a stretcher? I don't know who it is. We'll soon find out. Pick him, skip. Hello, Sergeant. Where's your detail? I had to send him down river with the boat, Captain. Well, that's too bad. I could use them. Double up in the Nyanza country, Sergeant. Nyanza? Isn't that in the gorilla country? I'll say it is, and boy, are those gorillas big. Some neighbors found Jim Connolly in the bush, and he was so badly wounded, I couldn't get anything out of him except that his ivory spare he was wiped out. That wounded man. What did the captain say his name was? Jim Conway. He's an ivory trader. Thanks. I was hoping they'd keep the treaty this time. Well, they haven't. But we've got to see that they do. I want you to establish a base camp up there. Yes, sir. Indio Bueno. Run over to the quartermaster's department and get me a case of bandages, quick! Indio Bueno. Please, doctor. May I see Mr. Conway? Certainly not. But please, sir, it's important. I gotta find out... What's more important is to save his life. Now, don't bother me, boy. Prepare to mount. Mount! Doctor. 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 Orderly. Isn't there anyone there? Doctor. 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 Orderly. Oh. Isn't there someone there that can help me? Oh. Wait a minute, Mr. Conway. I'll get it for you. Thanks. Are you the orderly? No, sir. I'm Tim Tyler. Know somebody by that name?
haven't got a chance with that lame leg. Glad you showed up. Say, how'd you get here anyway? All right, all right, if you feel that way about it. But I'll be seeing you. Yourself, Sonny. My horse got away from me. I was following the Ivory Patrol. Have you seen them? The Ivory Patrol? Well, I've never seen them this far north. What's up? They came up to get the natives that attacked Mr. Conway's Ivory Safari. Natives attacked Conway? That just can't be. Or Jim Conway's blood brother to half the tribes in Africa. <laughs> well, somebody attacked him because when I saw Mr. Conway, he was... <laughs> Amani, be a man. I'm going to use that rifle.
<laughs> what are you doing out here all by yourself, Sonny? My horse got away from me. I was following the Army Patrol. What's up? They came up to get the natives that attacked Mr. Conway's ivory safari. <laughs> well, somebody attacked him because when I saw Mr. Conway, he was... Amani! Leave him out! Cover, son, and use that rifle. Good kid. My arm's busted. Oh, hang on, I've come down after you. Hey, one of you, bring the rope, quick. Hurry up. Can't hang on forever. Bring that rope. Here, you. Robot, no. Do as I tell you, lower me down. Tim Tyler. Uh. I'll be back in a minute with some water. Those men won't help us. They'd probably kill us if they knew we were here. Kill us? Who are they? Spider webs, man. Who's Spider Web? I don't know exactly. But Sergeant Gates of the Ivory Patrol says he's the most dangerous man in Africa. Looks like those monkeys do one good job. This safari, she's all gone. Never mind those monkeys. Get busy with that ivory. You better get out while you can, son. Never mind about me. I'm all washed up. Anyhow. I'm sticking with you. Patrol. Right away, but get him, boy. I've been patrol. Hey, Sergeant. Sergeant Gates. Jim. Sign it up, Brent. Aren't we going to start shooting, Sergeant? Hold it till we get closer. Oh, 
Oh, Spider, how about using some of these hand grenades? Not yet. Where do we get to that cut? showed up just when I needed help. If it hadn't been for him, that line would have got me. You really believe that he's trying to pay you back for fixing his wounded leg, eh? Sure looks that way, doesn't it? Well, I'll believe it when I lay eyes on him. Tim, what are you doing out here? I can tell you about that later, Sergeant. Right now, you better take a look at Mr. Spencer. He's hurt pretty bad. Spencer? You mean the Army trader? Yes. The gorillas attacked his safari, and Mr. Spencer was knocked off the cliff. Oh, I see. That explains the shooting we heard. I thought it was Spider Webb's bunch. No. They didn't show up until it was all over. Look, Sergeant. There's a bunch of natives coming. They're what's left of Mr. Spencer's ivory safari. That's good. We need them to carry him back to Mbezi. Spud, get busy and fix up a litter. Right. Is the troop going back to Ambazi, Sergeant? No, we're going to stay up here until we get Spider Webb. But I'll send a detail back with Spencer, and you're going with him. I can't go back, Sergeant. My father's up here somewhere, and I've got to find him. Mr. Spencer just told me about a white man that's living with the Batwanga tribe. And oh, I don't think he could be your father, Tim. He's a renegade white man, because he incites all the natives to attack all other white men. I can't let that stop me, Sergeant. I've got to make sure. You're not going to do anything of the kind. You're going back to Ambazi. Why, the Batwangas are the worst tribe in Africa. And for your sake, Tim, I hope their white chief is not your father. I've got to make sure, Sergeant. Listen, if you help me find my dad, he can put you on the trail of Spider Webb. Well, what makes you think so? Because that's my dad's jungle cruiser that Spider Webb is using. Oh, I see. Well, I've got my orders from Captain Clark, and he's the only one who can change them. You're going back to Ambazi. We searched the jungle for nearly an hour, Captain, but we couldn't find a trace of Tim or his horse. Then it couldn't have been a jungle, Captain, that got him. No, sir. My guess is that he's on his way to the Batwanga country to look for his father. That's what he asked Sergeant Gates to let him do. I hope you're right, Corporal. It's a very fine trait in that boy, taking such a risk to find his father. But roaming the jungle alone is pretty dangerous, especially in the Batwanga country. Yes, sir. That'll be all, Corporal. Good morning, Miss Lady. Good morning, Spud. Hello, Miss Lacey. You're up early. Just trying to earn my keep, Captain. Mrs. Clark up yet? Yes, indeed. Go in and make yourself at home. Thank you. I will. According to what Tim Tyler saw, the ivory safari was attacked by giant gorillas. While it is impossible to believe that spider web a whim. Incites the gorillas to attack Safari, it is certain that he profits by the attack. Section at 11 o'clock. Go! 
morning, Doctor. How's the patient this morning? Much better, Miss Lacey, thanks to your careful nursing. trying to shave with one hand. Mr. Conway, I know who stole your ivory after your safari was wiped out. You do? Who was it? Spider Webb. Spider Webb? Oh, I never even heard of the man. But I'd give ten years of my life to get my hands on him. Oh, what's the good of talking? I'm broke. Every cent I had in the world was sunk in that ivory. In that case, Mr. Conway, I think I have a proposition that would interest you. You have? Miss, uh... Lacey, I came into the jungle to hunt big game. The game I'm really after is spider web. You know the jungle, and I've got the money and equipment for a safari. But there's one thing that must be understood before you give me your answer. Spider web's got to be taken alive. Well, that's no kind of a proposition. Telling me to keep my hands off of a man that ruined me. But just what do you want with spider web anyway? My brother's serving 10 years in a territorial prison for a diamond robbery that Spider Webb committed. The only chance I have of clearing him is to force a confession from Spider Webb. After I've got that, I don't care what you do with him. I see. When do we start? Just as soon as you're able. Fang, old boy. So you're keeping your eye on me, eh? It's all right, fella, as long as you show up the way you did just now. Well, your leg's all healed up. Say, fella, how about you and me hunting up some supper? Listen, don't you go making any passes with my horse. What's the matter, fella?
Panzer, the forest, fire! Later, Miss Laura. Savages, Mr. Conway. The jungle's full of them. Who are them? Sent out by the renegade white chief to capture us. We can't make a stand here. Head for those rocks. All right, move on. Two, three. Come on. Timber! Timber! You can't stop him. 
before they get to those rocks we're done for. the men for that tree. That lion had us cornered. Well, the lions won't bother us anymore. But we're not through with the savages. The Batwangas never quit. Their white leader sees to that. Can't we make a dash for it? Well, they'd cut us to pieces in the open. I'd rather take my chances in these rocks. You don't think much about chances, do you? Not unless we get help from the outside. And I don't know where it'd come from. I know. The Ivory Patrol. Why, boy, that's three days' ride from here. No, it's not. Sergeant Gates and some of his men are in a base camp not far from here. I can find them. Well, you can't do that, Tim. The jungle's full of Batwangas. I'll get through somehow, Mr. Conway. But, Tim... Don't you worry about me. Come on, Mr. Conway, big cover up here. I'll swing, my friend. Hey, what's the idea? Let me down. Well, most certainly, my friend. It's all right, Moran. Let him down. Will you go so fast, Keith? Listen, mister. This may be funny to you, but there's a lot of people going to get killed by natives if I don't get... Oh. If you don't get what, kid? Nothing. Answer me. Who is it that's going to get killed? I'm not telling you anything, Mr. Drake. So, he's no you, Gary? Yeah. This is the kid that was with the Lacey girl the day the Ivory Patrol came down on us. Maybe he's carrying message for Ivory Patrol now. Search him and see. So that's it, eh, Ken? Please don't take that. It's just an old letter from my yeah, father. Because you say you'll get it back. All right, Lazar, bring him along. We're going back to see the chief. Forget it. Maybe Spidey don't like for you to take him in this swamp. Do as I tell you. Get him into the cruiser. Lacey. They're getting ready to attack again. You think Tim got through to the Ivory Patrol? Well, if he did, they'd better get here pretty soon, and we won't have any use for them. Lacey! 
Listen, boy. Rifle shot. Over that way, Sarge. Right. Let's go. This is going to be the biggest show you ever saw. Sure glad to see you and your boys, Sergeant. Where'd you leave Tim? Tim? I haven't seen him. Why, didn't he send you here? No, we heard the shooting and... Something's happened to Tim. Oh, Sergeant, we've got to find him. Which way did he go? Well, he started for your camp that way. Strange we didn't run into him. I'll start searching right away. The boys will help you get the safari organized and make sure the natives don't attack again. Hey, Morgan. Yes, Sergeant? That's our horses. I'm taking Barry with me to find Tim Tyler. When you get Conway's safari on the trail, head back to camp. Right. Now, don't you worry about Tim. We'll round him up. Let's go, Barry. All right, sir. I'm going for karaoke. Hey, what's the idea? Let me down. There's more bed I got him. This place here, she's full of quick sand. Listen, kid, don't do nothing for make me lose my balance. If I do, I'll let you go, and you drown in the quicksand. Better see that doesn't happen, Lazar. A kid's worth his weight in gold dust, and if anything happens to him, you'll answer the spider. Just the same. You better don't move on. Hello, boys. Hey, Gary. What do we got here, Lazar? A prisoner? Who is he? Never mind the questions. I'll take them now. And keep your mouth shut, Lazar. Are you crazy, Drake? What do you mean bringing that boy into camp? Crazy like a fox. I've got something to show you. Inside. What is it? The letter we found on the kid, Spider. Listen. My dear son, I am writing this from the heart of the gorilla country, and will send it by a native runner who is going into Magana for Skip support. that. Get to the point. Okay. But instead of a gorilla, it was an injured elephant that I saw. It had come there to die, and I knew in a flash that all the stories I had heard about the elephant's burial ground were true. For well, right in front of me were literally thousands of skeletons of dead elephants. Millions of dollars worth of ivory tusks gleaming in the sun. Where's your father now, boy? You ought to know. You've got his jungle cruiser. Jungle cruiser? Oh, you mean that armored tank. Why, we didn't even know it belonged to your father. We found it abandoned in the jungle. Yeah, that's right. We found it. You expect me to believe that? You stole it from him. That's what you did. Too bad you feel that way about it, Sonny. You've got us all wrong. We want to help you find your father. So you can make him tell you where the elephant's burial ground is, eh? Well, I don't need your help. I can find him myself. 
I'm sorry, but you're not leaving here for a while yet. No? And I wouldn't advise you to try it, because nobody can get out of this swamp alive unless they know their way through the quicksand. Lazar! Come with me. Lazar! You pulled me, Spider? Come here. Take this boy to your quarters. I'm making you responsible for him. He's done already. Come along, kids. And tell Mogo I want him right away. You bet you my life. Come, kids. A secret was millions. I let it slip through my fingers. If I'd only known that when we took the jungle cruiser away from old Tyler. You're no mind reader, boss. How could you know the old goat had found the elephant's graveyard? At least I wasn't such a total idiot as to kill him. There's still a chance. You suppose he's still alive? If he is, we'll find him. Come in, Mogul. How would you find a man in the jungle? I would have drum talk for me. Water. Did you find a white man that way? Nothing moves in jungle that some eye does not see. If man alive, don't find him one. Good. Then send this message for me. Tell the white man who talks with gorillas his son is looking for him. Come any further, Chief. I'll come down to you. The Chief of the Court of Quarters does me great honor. I bring message to Great White Witch Doctor. A message for me? Come, says white man who talked with gorillas. His son looks for him. My son? Here in the jungle? Come, says meet him at Devilstone nearby McFarlow Falls. But why should Tim come into the jungle? Surely he got my letters. It was only two months ago that you so kindly sent one through to the coast. When I did not return, message must have been lost. I'll go at once. I'll send many warriors with you. That won't be necessary. Two or three will be enough in case of lions. It's one of our mounts, Sergeant. Looks like the one Tim Tyler was riding. You're right, it is. Wasn't a cat that got Tim. Because if it was, it'd be marks on the horn. Listen, Sarge. A motor. A motor. The Jungle Cruiser. So, oh, that's what happened to Tim. You think they got Tim in there? Come on. No use, Sarge. We can't outrun it. We can't shoot through it. We tried that before. This time, they don't know we're here. That's a break for us. We'll pick Tim's horse up on the way back.
All right, Mogo. Get over there by the Devil Stone and wait. Devil Stone bad for my people, Bonner. Mogo no like to do this. You've got to do it. You're the only one that old Tyler wouldn't recognize. Get going. Yes, sir. The rest of you get undercover. Tyler may be here any minute. Do you see anything of them, Sergeant? Yeah. What are they doing? Looks like they're out to ambush somebody. They're all hidden in the brush. All except a big native, and he's out in the open by a rock, right below the fall. Have they got Tim with them? They have. He's in that cruiser. Are you the one who sent a message about the white boy? Yes, one. Me, Mogu, from Awari tribe. Where is my son? Him sick, jungle fever. Mogu, take you to him. Quickly, please. Yes, one. you who sent the message. Well, they got him, whoever he is. What we do, Sarge? Cut down on them? No. You go back to the horses and wait for me. Go ahead. Where is my boy? What have you done to him? There's nothing to worry about, Professor. Your boy's all right, and as soon as you lead us to the elephant's burial ground, we'll give him back to you. I'll do no such thing. Not until I see Tim with my own eyes. Why, now, that seems reasonable, Professor. All right, boys, we'll take the Professor to the swamp. in the Ugambi Swamp, where we lost him that day. You ride back and fix the boy. I'll meet you there. What are you going to do? Follow the cruiser. I'm not letting it out of my sight. Today, the famous Kraft TV cameraman focuses on outer space for another exciting adventure in the world beyond tomorrow. Control deck to all stations. Stand by to raise ship. Blast off. This quick energy treat presents Tom Corbett Space Cadet, starring Frankie Thomas. This is the age of the conquest of space, where today Tom Corbett and his unit mates are assigned to a punishment detail that brings them face to face with the monster of space. February 
12th, excessive speed through controlled space lane. January 23rd, reckless maneuvering while in formation. February 17th, blast off from Venusport without proper clearance. March 11th, buzzing the Ganymede space station. Yeah, that last one was my fault, uh, sir. It was I, my fault. I, I was the one to blame, down. Captain. I'm not I interested in who's to blame. You're a cadet unit, and you share the responsibility for each other's mistakes. And this is quite a collection of mistakes. Getting to be real hot jets, aren't we, huh? All three of them. Well, maybe something ought to be done to cool down those jets. Something like uh, a month of cargo detail. That ought to dampen your rockets. Cargo detail? A month, that? sir? Yeah, a whole month? A whole month, Thistle. And this is a long month. Any remarks? <clears throat> no, sir. All right. Now, as you know, a cargo ship moves in a, uh, on a rigid schedule and in controlled space lanes. The function is to maintain a constant schedule and course. Now, maybe this ought to teach you some discipline. I'm sure it will, sir. Well, I hope it does. Because I don't want to hear of one second deviation in the schedule or one degree deviation in the course in the next 30 days. 31, sir. What? Yeah, a little, a little long month, sir. We, uh, understand, Captain Strong. Well, I hope you do. All right. Now, Cadet Corbett, you may proceed to the dispatcher's office and pick up your flight plan for the trip to Venus. I am dismissed. I said he was dismissed. Now, maybe that's what's the matter with you two. Maybe you don't hear your orders clearly. Astro, the Polaris is being loaded right now. You may pick up the manifest at the quartermaster's office. Aye, aye, Dismissed. sir. Dismissed. And Cadet Thistle. Yes, sir. New astrogation charts have just been issued. You can get a complete set at spaceport control. Yes, sir. Dismissed. Tom, have you seen our cargo manifest? No, and I don't want to either. This flight plan is bad enough. Why, what's the matter with it? Oh, look at this schedule. Why, I could get out and push the Polaris faster than this. Oh, well, it may be a slow trip, but I think it's going to be an interesting one. Take a look at the manifest. Well, just ordinary cargo for Venus. Here. You call that ordinary cargo? Why, great jumping Jupiter. Now, it strikes me that T.J. ought to handle this particular item. Oh, now, wait a minute. Now, let's face it, Tom. Seventy percent of the blasting that Captain Strong gave us was because of T.J. Well, we haven't exactly been angels ourselves. Well, no, but compared to him, we're wearing halos. Now, I think that this little job cut him right down to size. He wouldn't like it. Can you think of a better reason for having him do it? All right. I'll have him report to you below. Good. <laughs> Hello, TJ. TJ on the ball. There's some cargo to be secured below for blast off. Tag, you're it. Come on, TJ, get a move on. Hey, what's the matter with your foot? Oh, watch that first step. It's a little loose. It's all right? Yeah, my back is well, killing me. Look, we got to secure this cargo before blast off. We already have, haven't we? There's more in the bunk room. The bunk? Oh, that's fine. Where do we sleep? Maybe we don't. Uh-oh. What now? Uh, you're going to have to do this yourself. You see, it's almost time for blast off. I'll have to go heat up the reactor. Oh, uh, thank you, Tom. I can't help it, TJ, but uh, this will be easy. I'm sure you can handle it yourself. Uh, thanks, thanks for nothing. Mm. They got him here, the crown jewel. He's a monster. He's going to rip me apart. Well, that's funny. There's no gorilla on the manifest. I don't care what's on the manifest. I know what's oh, in there. Oh, wait a minute. Yes, here it is. A bunk room, one specimen, pan troglodytes. Yeah, what? 
Pam Troglodytes, nickname Muggs. That sounds worse than a gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> that TJ is a harmless little chimpanzee being shipped to a Venusian zoo. Harmless little? Did, did you do? Did you see him? <laughs> now, TJ, you're not afraid of a little chimp. Me? Afraid? <laughs> Yeah. You're going to down. No, I'm sorry. You're going to have to do this yourself. I have to go heat up the reactor. Well, let that teach you. I'll wait. I'm in no hurry. Yeah, but Captain Strong won't. Remember what he said about sticking to the schedule on the second? Now, tell me, TJ, who would you rather face again? The skipper or the chimp? Spoken like a true spaceman. <laughs> Be my guest. Yes. Nice, Jim. <laughs> you got a nice little one? I'm going to put this pretty little trap. Hello, TJ. Check in, will you? Yeah, what do you want? Listen, haven't you got that chimp secured yet? Oh, I just finished blasting. I'll get up to the radar bridge right away. No, stay there. Lash yourself into your bunk. We're three minutes behind schedule now, and we can't lose any more time. Okay, Tom. Astro, you ready? All set, Tom. All right. Energize cooling pumps. Cooling pumps. Aye! Speed reactant. Reactant speeding at D9 rate. Switch in. Gyros. Gyros on. Blast off. Minus five. Gravity generators are on. Stand by at stations and maintain standard watch procedures. Let's try to make this operation perfect. Captain Strong to Rocket Cruiser Polaris. Check in. Rocket Crew Cruiser Polaris, Cadet Corbett here. Cadet Corbett, am I to understand that you and your crew like being earthbound? Uh, earthbound, sir? Well, you're hung on to it four minutes longer than you should have. Oh, I'm sorry, Captain. Strong. I don't See, want we... excuses. I want results. Now, you make up that four minutes before you reach Space Beacon 12. Well, that'll be easy, Captain. As a matter of fact, we can deliver this whole cargo ahead of schedule. You right. will not get we ahead could... or behind the schedule, Corbett. You'll fly exactly on the schedule. You're going to learn discipline if I have to keep you on that freight run until you're ready to graduate. End transmission. Yes, sir. End transmission. Uh, am I wrong, or, uh, Captain Strong sound just a little bit hot under the collar? Very funny. But nothing else better go wrong, or he'll make it hot for us. Listen, where's T.J.? He's still below, I guess. He's got to astrogate a new heading for us as soon as we cross the lunar orbit. We well, better call him up here, then. Yeah. Hello, T.J. Yeah, Tom, go ahead. Look, what's taking you so long? Get up on the bridge. Oh, give me a chance, will you? I just unstrapped myself from the bunk. Oh. Well, listen, be sure and secure the door after you've released that chimp. You released him? What for? Why don't we just leave him strapped in the bunk? Because the trip is too long and we have to deliver him in good condition. Now let him go. Ah, oh, Tom. That's an order. Yes, sir. Hey, getting kind of tough, aren't we? Well, I, I have to now, Astro. I don't want any more trouble on this trip. Least of all from T.J. Thistle. <laughs> Now listen, you dehydrated ape. If you'll give me any more trouble, you won't be sent to the Venusian Zoo. You're gonna be stuffed, sent to a Venusian museum. Now. Now there's Luna, Tom, coming up to starboard. We'll cross her orbit in about three minutes. Now what in blaze is that little monkey doing? Which one? TJ or the chimp? Go on, joke. But you try to explain it to Captain Strong the next time he calls. Ah, uh -uh, not me. He's lost his sense of humor. Hello, TJ. Check in. TJ, come in, will you? 
Hey, listen, TJ, you want to be grounded for the rest of your life? Maybe there's something wrong. Well, something better be. Because if he's just fooling around, something is going to be wrong with him. You better go below and check. Wait, I'm going to put the ship on automatic, and I'll go down there with you. Come on. Tom, look, the door's wide open. Oh, I told TJ to keep it locked. Now, can't he do anything right? Maybe there is something wrong. Come on. All right. <laughs> well, the chimps now. I wonder where TJ is. <laughs> Very funny. Very funny. TJ, what happened? Oh, that blasted ape. As soon as I took the straps off, he started wrestling with me. Next thing I know, I was all tangled up in here. Now, get me out of here, will you? Oh, no, wait a minute, Tom. Let's leave him there. The chimp could plot the headache. Oh, Astro, we... Come on, Astro. This is no time to get around. Yeah. Help me get him out of here. Or we'll all be monkeys in Captain Strong's book. That head is. Right. Hey, what about the chimp? Well, you look for him below. I'll see if I can locate him up top side. Okay. Hey, that's a distress alert. Somebody's in trouble. Come on. Hey, wait a minute. That, that's our signal. What? Are you sure? Well, don't you think I know what my own gear sounds like? That's our signal. We're in trouble? That chimp. He must be up on the radar bridge. Brother, and every ship in the area is getting that signal. And what's worse, so is Captain Strong. Let's go. Oh. Captain Strong to Rocket Cruiser Polaris, your distress alert received. Six ships are converging on your position. What is your trouble? Captain Strong to Rocket Cruiser Polaris, can you hear me? Acknowledge, please. Acknowledge. <laughs> Captain Strong to Polaris, can you read me? What's the oh, trouble? Check oh, in, Polaris. Oh, 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 oh. Hello, Polaris. Strong to Polaris. Well, answer him, TJ. Answer him? What'll I say? Tell him the truth. That's all we can do. And have the whole cadet corps pointing at us as the guys who have made monkeys out of by a monkey? Hello, Polaris. Check in. Well, have you got any better ideas? Well, I have the reputation. I may as well earn it. Black it through the Polaris cadet pistol here. Well, that's and what's wrong? What's the trouble? There's really no trouble, sir. No trouble? Without the audio receiver. Uh, well, 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 you see, sir? Yes, Cadet Pistol, I see what? Uh, I stumbled and accidentally set off the alert, sir. That's all that happened. You stumbled? Yes, sir. And that's all? Yes, sir. Six ships have changed course and are converging on your position. Every solar guard and space station on Earth Mars and Venus are on the alert, and that's all that happened? You stumbled? Yes, sir. Is Cadet Corbett there, please? Uh, yes, sir. And Cadet Astro? Every member of the crew is present accounted for, sir. Well, that's nice, because I want everyone on board that ship to hear this. For the rest of the trip, I'm going to have a radar scanner on you every minute of the time. Is that clear? And if there's one more deviation from standard operating procedure, one more accident, one more stumble, Oh, help me, I'll tie rockets to the three of you and blast you out of the academy. Is that clear? Uh, yes, yes, sir. All right, in plain, simple language, and this is an order. There will be no more funky shines on that ship and transmission. Well, we sure picked the right word, funky shines. Tom, um, we've got to find that chimp. And how? Look, T.J., you chart that new heading. Yeah. Astro and I are going to below to find that monkey, and as soon as you're done, you come down and help us.
sign of that chimp anywhere, Tom. Did he do much damage up here? Bloody. Hey, what are you cutting the engines for? Because our steering vanes are jammed. Oh, great. Oh, he really did a job on us. What are we going to do now? Well, we'll have to report it to Captain Strong and get some help. Oh, spaceman's luck, pal. Thanks. And another thing, Thistle. I will not accept further explanations or excuses. I'm blasting off to meet you when you land at Venus, and if you are one second late, don't bother landing at all. This I can't report. Busted steering vanes, a monkey loose on the ship, and the skipper down on our necks. Oh, brother. And he wanted to restrict us to a nice, simple car. We'll be back soon with the rest of today's exciting adventure. But first, let's see what Casey and Candy are cooking up for us today. It's going to be caramel sauce on ice cream and cake sandwiches. Just like this. They look like a party, they taste like a party. And here's how you can fix them at your house. Now for the caramel sauce, put 28 Kraft caramels, that's half a pound, in the top of the double boiler. And then add half a cup of water or milk. Casey's using water here. Now, you'd better ask Mother to do this. Put the double boiler on the stove and stir the caramels over boiling water till they're melted. And you have a smooth, luscious caramel sauce like this. For the sandwiches, you need squares of yellow or white cake split in half crosswise, you see? Mother could make this from a package of cake mix. Maybe you could even do it yourself. Then put a slice of vanilla ice cream between the two slices of cake. That's the way. Then pour that scrumptious Kraft caramel sauce over the top. The sauce can be used hot or cold. It's wonderful either way. Kraft caramels taste wonderful anyhow, whether you make them into sauce or eat them plain. Yes, they're really delicious. Why don't you ask Mother to put Kraft Dairy Fresh Caramels on her shopping list and remind her if she forgets, because the whole family will enjoy rich, sweet, soft Kraft caramels. Okay, Tom, I'm ready. Good. Well, we have an excellent chance of making it to Venus on time anyway. Yeah, if we don't have any more trouble with that monkey. No sign of him, huh? No, I didn't really have time to look. I had to suit up. I figured our first job was to go down and fix the steering vanes. Well, where do you jokers think you're going, Hawk Sign? To try and clean up that steering vane jam. But what about Muggs? You have to find him, DJ. Chicken. What? Well, you take the easy job and stick me with the tough one. Yeah, just like you let me take that beating from Captain Strong. I'm sorry about that, TJ. I know it was rough. We heard part of it over the intercom. Oh, you didn't hear the half of it. My ears will never be the same. Well, don't worry, TJ. We're going to get to Venusport on time. <laughs> We'd better. And I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm not going to write that report. You are. What report? Captain Strong wants a written report of this whole trip. He wants everything that's happened while we've been out here. And this is for the records, our records. Oh, boy. He's really steaming. Huh? Yeah. Well, let's take care of first things first. Come on, Astro. Right. Oh, look, DJ. Hmm. Find that monkey and lock him up as soon as you can. I suppose I can. Keep him away from the controls and off the power deck. Now, look, we're going to be working out near the exhaust tubes. If the reactors are started while yes. we're out there, <laughs> goodbye us. Yes, don't worry about him. I'll take care of him. Now, get going, will you? See you later, TJ. <laughs> through the ship. I'm on the radar bridge now. He's not here, so I'm heading below. Okay. But hurry it up, will you? The longer that 
chip is on the loose, the more damage you can cause. <laughs> yeah, don't I know it. Hey, listen, how are you doing? All right. We're at the stern now. I suppose just climb down into the exhaust. Well, how long do you think it's going to take you to fix those veins? Well, it depends on the amount of damage done, T.J. Look, knock it off. Now look for that chip. I'll check with you later. Okay, Tom. How's it look down there, Astro? Not as bad as I thought, Tom. The starboard steering vane is jammed against the one next to it. Hand me that number three Phillips, will you? Sure. Got it here? There. Good. Listen, how long do you think it'll take you to clear it up? Only a minute or so. Can I help? No, thanks. It'd be a lot easier if I worked in here alone. Say, wait a minute. Maybe you better wait until T.J. finds that chimp. Oh, that's all right. I checked the power deck before I came out. He wasn't down there. Uh -huh. Anyhow, we don't have any time to waste. Here goes. Right. That's all? Yeah, Tom. How's it going? Fine. Be back out in a second. Good. Hello, Tom. Check in. Yes, T.J. Did you find him? No, I'm getting a little worried. Why? Swallow so checked every place for the power deck, so we must be there. Power deck? Hey, listen. Jump at Jupiter? What's that? The generator. He's starting the reactors. Astro, get out of there quick. You back. TJ, get down there and stop him. I'm on my way. Come on, Astro, hurry. Coming. Those fire in less than 30 seconds. Get clear. Tom, check in. Yes, T.J. Are you okay? Yep, we're all right. Astro got clear just in time. We're standing on the stabilizer. Well, how about the steering vanes? Well, they're all fixed now. Good. Listen, we're coming in. Have you found that chimpanzee yet? No, but I'm going to right now. Where are you, you blasted excuse for an ape? Huh? There you are. Okay, Muggs. This is where we can get even. I don't believe it. It's just not possible. How could all these things go wrong on a simple little cargo voyage? And as for this report, I, I cannot make either head or tail of it. Not in this opening sentence. All of our troubles started when part of the cargo escaped from the bunk room. Now, how can a cargo escape? Well, sir, that's why I requested permission to deliver this report in uh, person. We uh, didn't want to go into too much detail for the record. And why not? Well, sir, it's a little easier to show you, to tell you. Muggs! What in the universe is... Uh, uh, pan troglodyte, sir. Yeah, yes, he sir. got loose again, sir. See what we mean? That's the reason why we didn't try to explain it over the audio receiver, sir. We didn't quite want the whole solar guard to know that a monkey was making monkeys out of it. Do you mean that, that he set out the distress alert? That's right, and sir. That he put the ship through all those space acrobatics? Uh, yes, sir, and a great deal more. Mm. And uh, I didn't quite know how to enter him, sir, in the report. Oh, yes, yes, the report. Report. Yes. Uh, um, under the circumstances, I think it would probably be best if we just didn't submit it. Did he submit it, sir? Uh, no, because, you see, well, Commander Arkwright might see it, and he'd ask some embarrassing questions. I mean, they'd be embarrassing even for me. Yes, sir. It sure would, sir. I oh, very embarrassing, sir. All right. All right, you win. But don't let this be an excuse for any future black jetting. Now, if you get out of line once more, so help me, I'll put him in command of the Polaris. take you to the world beyond tomorrow. Don't forget to be with us for next exciting adventure of Tom Corbett's Space Cadet. Starring Frankie Thomas and featuring Al Markham and Jack Grimes.
has been a Rock Hill production presented by Kraft Caramel. Hello, this is Don O'Malley again with Don's Breakfast Cereal Show. Hope you enjoy the first four chapters of Tim Tyler's Luck from 1937. And we'll be back next week with four more chapters and then a few more surprises. So thanks for tuning in. Stay safe. Okay.